Lord, thank you for your mighty power. Thank you for your precious blood. Thank you for your fire in this place. Today is a day of miracle for us. Thank you, Lord. Speak to us continuously in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. Thank you, Agnes. Thank you, Sister Suma. Amen. Hallelujah. The mighty anointing of God is here. Amen. How many of you believe that? Amen. I can feel the presence of God here. I can feel the power of God. Hallelujah. I, 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 I just believe God. I believe that God destroyed all the works of the snakes. Amen. Hallelujah. If you are seeing snakes in your dreams, that means God is going to destroy it. Amen. Hallelujah. Whenever you see the snakes in your dream, remember the fire of the Lord immediately. Hallelujah. Just tell the enemy. You can show me all these things, but I want to show you one thing. It's a fire of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God will destroy all the works of the enemy in your life and my life. That's the reason you are here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know how I am going to preach. It's only 30 minutes today. Okay, let's see. <clears throat> God wants to give you two promises for the church this morning. I want to read these two promises. Um, God wants to speak to us through these two promises. Usually, God will, most of the time, God will give one promise. But today, God said, I want to give them two promises. Okay, one promise is from New Testament. The another one is from Old Testament. Romans chapter 10, verse 11. Someone can read it, Romans 10, 11. The other person can read it, Zephaniah 3, 19. Romans 10, 11. The first promise God wants to give, give us is that he will not put us into shame. Amen. The second promise, Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 19. Behold at the time. Mm. Yeah. The last part of this verse is the second promise. I will appoint them for praise and fame in every land where they were put to shame. Two promises. The first one, God will not put you into shame. The second promise, maybe you went through the shameful events in your life. Wherever you found shame, God is going to appoint a time of praise and fame for you. Amen. God is going to turn all your shames into joy. How many of you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. The one first promise, he will not put you into shame anymore. Amen. The second one is, if you already gone through the shameful incidents or shameful times, and you are thinking, why, Lord, you allowed those things in my life? Why I came through all these shameful things? God wants to encourage you. I am going to turn every shame into joy. Hallelujah. Wherever you found faith, shame, in the same place, God will bring a fame. Amen? Shame will become a fame. Then you will praise God. You will say, Lord, it's, it, thank you, Lord. Because of that shame, today I am in the time of fame. Hallelujah. These two things God wants to do to our church. These two things God wants to do in your personal life, in your family life, in your ministry, Wherever you are working in your workplace, God wants to do these two things. Amen. Are you ready to receive these promises? Amen. Amen. Okay, quickly we can turn your turn our Bible <clears throat> to Psalm 25, 1 to 3. How God will bring honor in our life or how God will avoid the shame in our life. God will never put you into shame. How God will honor you. The first thing is, God will honor you through your words. Hallelujah. God will honor your words. Hallelujah. Psalm 25, verses 1 to 3. This is the prayer of David. Hmm. Someone can read it. To you, O Lord, hmm. I lift up my soul. Oh hmm. my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Indeed, let no one who waits on you be ashamed. Let those be ashamed who deal with treacherously, without cause. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, uh, David prayed, Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be shamed. 
David knew what is the shameful situation. What is the shameful things. That's why David prayed like that. Lord, let me not be shame. I am waiting for you, so let me not be shame. You can read the verse 20 in the same Psalm 25 also. That is also says the same thing. Keep He's, my soul hmm. and deliver me. Let me not be ashamed. For uh, I put my trust in you. Amen. Again he is praying like this. Let me not be shamed. For I put my trust in you. David prayed like that. Lord, don't put me into shame. David was a man who went through many difficulties. But... Whenever he went through the difficulties or whenever he went through the good times, he always hold on to God. Hallelujah. He, his prayer is, Lord, don't put me into shame. We should also pray like that. Every day we need to pray. Lord, don't put me into shame in midst of my colleagues. Don't put me into shame in midst of my boss. Don't put me into shame in midst of my families, friends. Hallelujah. This is a good prayer we can do. Okay, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 24. When David faced the giant Goliath, maybe we heard this message many times, but today again God wants to speak to us through this incident. David faced the Goliath. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 24. How God honored David's words. Let us see. 1 Samuel chapter 17, 24. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him, and were dreadfully afraid. Whenever giant Goliath came and stood, everybody afraid of him. Bible says everybody fled. Everybody fled from him. They are not able to stand before him. They are afraid. They want to go away from him. You can read verse 11 also. For same chapter verse 11. Um, when Saul and all Israel heard these hmm. words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Here, Bible mention about Saul also. Saul was the king that time. He, ha he has to be bold and he has to withstand. But Bible says he also troubled. Whenever he heard the, the words of the Philistine, greatly afraid. The king was not able to stand before the giant Goliath. But Bible says David stood in that place. You, you can read the verse, uh, t verse 23. Same chapter, 1 Samuel 17, 23. Then as he talked with them, hmm. there was the champion, the Philistine of God, Goliath by name, coming hmm. up from the armies of the Philistine. And he spoke according to the same words, so David heard them. Bible says the same verse David heard. Whatever the words heard by the king Saul, whatever the words heard by the army of the Israel, the same words David also heard. But the difference is David stood in the place. David started to inquire about the giant. David started to talk about the giant. He did not afraid of Goliath. He did not afraid of any threat. But he started to discuss about that man. Because he always used to pray, Lord, don't put me into shame. He knew one thing clearly. Even though he is a big giant, my God will never put me into shame. He started to encourage. But if you read verse 26, verse 26. Um, mm. Then David spoke to the men mm. who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills the Philistine mm. and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? First, David was talking to the people, those are there. there was, it, it was a battlefield, so definitely they were be soldiers. So first, David was conversing about the mighty power of God to the armies. He is conversing. He is telling, who is this uncircumcised? circumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God. First he spoke to the armies. The words of faith came out of the mouth of David to the people. Those are standing there. Then if you read the next verse, 
uh, verse 28. Now, hmm. Eliab, the, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the men, the Eliab's anger was aroused against David. Okay, who heard the wo words of David? The brother. Brother. First, he, the army people heard the words of David. Then his own family heard the words of David. David started to confessing the goodness of mighty power of God to the army people. Now he is confessing the mighty power of God to his own family. But that family did not accept his words. If you re we can read the continuously, you can read the word. Why did you come down here? Hmm. And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart. For you have come down to see the battle. In the family misunderstood David. Right? Family started to dis discourage David. Many times whenever we confess the words of faith, the family will not understand. Right? You are talking out of pride. But Bible says he did not listen to those things. David did not listen to those things. He start, continuously he started to confess the words of faith. First he spoke to the army. Then he spoke to the brother. Then if you read verse 20, 30, verse 30. Uh, then he turned from him toward another and said the same thing. Again, he did not give up. Even though family discouraged him, his own brother discouraged him, he did not give up. He continuously speaking the words of faith. This morning, God wants to encourage us. If you, if you, are, if you don't want to be in, into shame, you need to confess the words of faith. Amen? The words of faith needs to come out of your mouth. You need to declare the mighty things of God in your life. Hallelujah. Whether it's a, doesn't matter how much big the giant is, but you need to confess the words of faith. Hallelujah. Okay, then verse, verse 32. 32. Hmm. Then David said to Saul, hmm. let no man's heart fail because of him. Hmm. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Okay. Now he is confessing to? King. King. Right? First he spoke to the army. Then he spoke to the family. family. Now he is speaking to the king. king. The same words. Same words again and again. Confessing the goodness of God. If you read verse 36. 36. Your 36. servant has killed both lion and bear, mm. and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, seeing he has defined the armies of the, defied the armies of the. David did not consider the giant not even as a human being. He said he is like a beast, like a, like a like a lion, like a bear. He is not. A, I am not at all considering him as a man, right? God has given me authority over the lion and the bear. So, I, he will be like a one. Why you guys are afraid of him? See what kind of words come out of him. Right? He is confessing. Okay. Now, he spoke to everyone. He spoke to the army. He spoke to the family. He spoke to the king. Now, David is thinking, Lord, you need to honor these words. You should not put me into shame. Boldly I spoke to the army. Boldly I spoke to my brother. Boldly I confessed to the king. Now it is your responsibility to honor my words. You should not put me into shame. I completely lean on you and I completely depend on you and I spoke all these words. So you need to honor my Words, right? One more person also he confesses. Uh, chapters, uh, same chapter, verse 46 and 47. 46. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand. Okay. And I, to, I, whom, to whom he spoke these words? Goliath. To the giant. To the Goliath. Okay. He, he dealt with everyone. He dealt with his own family. He dealt with his own nation army. He dealt with his own king and not only with his own people, he dealt with the enemy also. Amen? Amen. Are you, hallelujah. When you, whenever you are facing the giant, you need to speak these words. 
to everyone. Hallelujah. Whether it's the family, whether it's the enemy, whether it's the people, those are in power. Amen. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter. Whether it's a family, keep speak the words of faith. Hallelujah. God will honor your words. Hallelujah. You need to speak. Then you need to tell the Lord. Lord, I spoke. I spoke words of faith. I spoke completely dependent on you. So you need to honor this words. Hallelujah. No other way. You need to come and help me. Don't put me into shame. David knew the strategy. How to turn the hearts of God towards him. Amen. So that he will not be put into shame. Hallelujah. Are you worried whether God will put you into shame? God wants to encourage you. He will never put you into shame. Hallelujah. But at the same time, follow the strategy of God. Hallelujah. Know how to attract his heart. Hallelujah. Lord, I am keep on speaking the words of faith. Hallelujah. God, I am blessed. He will lift me up. Hallelujah. Keep confessing like that. When you drive the car, maybe it looks like you are a mad person. You are talking to someone. When the, name, when the next person standing next lane, when they turn to you, they are thinking, oh, he's crazy. But you are talking to the living God. Hallelujah. You are talking to the atmosphere. You are sending word into the atmosphere. You are sending word to the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. David knew the strategy so that how he can avoid the shame in his life. Hallelujah. God is encouraging you. I will never put you into shame. At the same time, learn all this strategy. How to avoid the shameful things in your life. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let us read continuously. Okay, now he spoke all the things. Now, <clears throat> it's God's responsibility to <clears throat> honor his words. Okay, many times, the confessing the words of faith, it's a problem for us. Right? Sometimes we are confessing all the words of faith. But after a while, we will become discouraged. Nothing is happening. Nothing is happening. I am trying all the strategy. I am confessing all the words of faith. Some people will tell thousands totram. Right? Thousands. Uh, praise the Lord. Thousand. But it's nothing happening. Why it's not happening? Then they will slowly stop the things. Then completely they, they will stop the confessing the words of faith. The reason why we are not able to confess the words of faith it's, it's because of our perspective, because of our view. That is the problem for us to confess the words of faith. We can see here a couple of verses, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 8. Here we can see view of Goliath, how Goliath saw the things, how David saw the things. Okay, first, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 8. Then he stood and cried out mm. to the armies of Israel mm. and said to them, why have you come out to line up for battle? Hmm. Am I not a Philistine? Hmm. And you the servants of Saul? Hmm. So choose a man for yourself. Okay, what, what Goliath said? You the servants of? Saul. Saul. De Goliath saw the army of Israel as a servants of? Saul. Saul. That is his perspective. But if you read <coughs> verse 26 again. Already we read it, verse 26. Then David spoke to the men mm. who stood by him, saying, What shall be done for the man who kills this Philistine mm. and takes away the reproach from Israel? Mm. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? How David saw the army? Armies of the living God. How Goliath saw? Servants of Saul. That is the difference. David did not see them as the servants of Saul. We are not the servants of Saul. We belong to the armies of the living God. Amen. Amen. That perspective made his confession in the right way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So our perspective, we need to change our perspective. We need to consider ourselves, I am belong to the army of the living God. Amen. I belong to his kingdom, not Saul's kingdom. Hallelujah. I am not the soldier of Saul. I am not belong to his nation. I belong to the living God's nation. Amen. My kingdom is not here. Hallelujah. I belong to the living God's kingdom. 
Hallelujah, I belong to that army. That perspective changed Goliath's confession. Amen? If you read some more, some more views in the, the same chapter, chapter 17, verse 24. Chapter 17, verse 24. And all the men of Israel, mm. when they saw the man, fled. Okay, now the first view of the people. Now the view of the people. First view of the Goliath. Now the view of the people, that, that soldier. What they saw? When what they, they saw? saw the they saw the man. Man. They saw Goliath. Her perspective is always centered Goliath. Not the living God. Hallelujah. David perspective, David view always centered the living God. These people, even though they are uh, Israel, their perspective, their view always centered the Goliath. Yeah, man? Many times we forgot to think about the living God. Many times we forgot to see the goodnesses of God in our life. Many times we forgot to see how God saved us. Right? When, when David went and spoke to Saul, King Saul, he said, one time the lion came. My God rescued me. Have you ever read that? Yes? Yes, yes right? Yes. He always, he always thinks about the mighty things of God. Hallelujah. That same living God is living today. He is not a dead God. I am worshipping a living God. He is same God alive today. How many times God did a miracle in your life? Amen. Yeah, Amen. Have you ever thought about it? How many times God rescued you? How many God, times God saved you from the mouth of the lion, right? The same God is living today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is God of hosts. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of hosts. David perspective, David view, always God-centered view. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God is encouraging you. Let your eyes be fixed upon me and me alone. Hallelujah. Don't consider yourself as a citizen of America. Don't consider yourself you are working for this man, this person. Hallelujah. God has placed you in your place. Hallelujah. You are serving the living God. Hallelujah. Your king of kings is with you in your workplace too. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that? Amen. Hallelujah. Just tell the Lord, Lord, this is your place. Let your throne be established in this place. Let your you rule over this place, O oh God. Hallelujah. Let your eyes, let your eyes fix upon the living God. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of hosts. Okay, then, then 33, verse 33. Here you can see the view of the king. And Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. Hmm. For you are a youth and he a man of war from his youth. Okay. Here, this is the view of Saul. King Saul. Mm -hmm. King Saul should be a should should have been a wise man, right? But he was looking the outward look of David. Many times we are seeing the things outwardly. Our perspective, our views, always limited. We are just seeing the outward things. We are not able to see into it. Hallelujah. Saul failed to do, to see the faith inside of David. Have you, are you listening? We have failed to see the things into it. Amen. We are seeing outwardly and we have started to compare. Oh, this giant is this much. I am having only this much. Hallelujah. David says, David said to king, I am your resource. Use me. But king was, king Saul was comparing this resource and this challenge. Hallelujah. Sometimes if, if, you are a, if you are a project manager, they will give you a big task, but they will give you a small resources into your hand. Have you ever experienced? Yes. yes? Then you will think, oh, it's a big project. They are giving only little resources. You will compare this and this. But you fail to see there is a favor of God behind this little resource. Amen? The favor of God behind David. But King Saul failed to see that. 
Hallelujah. The King Saul failed to see the works of the Lord behind David. Dave, King Saul see, saw David outwardly. Right? Many times you are also thinking, I'm having little resources, but you didn't, you, you failed to see there is a favor of God behind it. Amen? Amen. I, I was never working as a project manager, but I'm preaching about the project manager. Many of you project manager, but maybe, is it wrong? No, no, no. But whenever, whether it's a little resource or a great resource, you need to see the favor of God behind it. Amen? That little resource coming from God. Not from your boss. Whether it's a little resource or great resource, it's coming from above. Hallelujah. Just put your trust upon the favor of God. Just see the favor of God which is behind David. King Saul failed to see the favor of God behind David. That is the view of King Saul. Okay. Verse 42 and 43. 42. And when he, when the Philistines looked about and saw David, he disdained, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ready and good looking. Hallelujah. Here, the enemy Goliath also saw the David's outward appearance. Okay, he is so young, he is very good looking. He is not fit for the battle. He failed to see what is inside David. You can read the next verse. Hmm. So the Philistine said to David, hmm. Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the hmm. Philistine cursed David by his gods. Goliath was asking, Am I dog? David was thinking, You are worse than dog. Right? Right? But Goliath was considering himself, Am I? Dog, right? When you stand firm, the enemy's perspective view will go diminish. You understand? A man first he considered himself is a giant. giant. Now he is considering himself am a dog. dog. See how God is taking out the power from him. When you stand firm, when your perspective, when your view, when your words of faith comes out in the proper way then automatically the enemy's power will diminish. Hallelujah. He will become a dog. Very soon, he is going to become a food for the dog. You don't understand? Right? Very soon, he is going to be a food for the dog or for the birds. Right? So, God is, David knew how to see the things. Hallelujah. Many times we fail to see the things in the right way. That's why the words of faith is not coming out of our mouth. We are seeing the giant. We are listening to his voice. That's a problem. But this morning God wants to encourage you. I will not put you into shame. Okay, see the reply of uh, David for Goliath. Verse 45. Uh, then David mm. said to the Philistine, mm. You come to me with the sword, mm. with the spear, mm. and with the javelin. Hmm. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, hmm. the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. Hmm. Yeah, this, hmm. this day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, hmm. and I will strike you and take your head from you. Amen. And this day I hmm. will give you give the carcasses of the camp of the Philistine to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth, and that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Here, verse five, 45, David said like this, you came with sword, you came with a spear, you came with a javelin, you came with many weapons, but even though I am having a, the sling and the stones, I don't want to put my trust in that. I came with the name of the Lord. You did not know the name of the Lord, but I know that names of the Lord. He is Jehovah Nishi. Hallelujah. David was telling the giant Goliath, you don't know about the names of our Lord. He is Jehovah Nishi, God of victory. He is El Shaddai, Almighty God. He is Jehovah Shalom, God of peace. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the healer. Hallelujah. David completely lean up upon the Lord of, Lord's name. If you read Psalm 46, verse 7 to 11. 
Psalm 46, uh, 7 to 11. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. How, how he named the Lord? The Lord of? Host. Host. He is our Lord. He is the Lord of this host, this army. Okay. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Hmm. Selah. Hmm. Uh, come behold the works of the Lord hmm. who has made desolations in the earth. Hmm. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. Hmm. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. Here the psalm is saying that he breaks the bow and cuts the spear into two. Hmm. He burns the chariot in the fire. Amen. Be still and know that I am God. Giant Goliath, you may come with all the spear and javelin. But my God is Lord of hosts. He is going to break all those things. Amen. Amen. He confessed like that. How many of you believe that the Lord of hosts is with you? Amen. Whatever the javelin, whatever the spear, whatever the weapons comes against you, God will break it. And God will burn all the chariots. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. And the Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. Hallelujah. If the Lord of hosts is with you, no javelin, no spear can harm you. Amen. God will break everything. Hallelujah. The only purpose of God is he will not, he doesn't want to put you into shame. Hallelujah. Bible says no weapon shall prosper against you. Amen. Isaiah 54, 17. That's a promise for us. Hallelujah. So, you know all this incidents. Finally, God honored the words of David. Amen. God gave the giant Goliath into his hand. Bible says he did not have any sword. Right? But now he needs to take off his head. What he did? He took his own Goliath's sword, cut the head. Hallelujah. Then Bible says he took all the weapons and kept it with him. He took all those things. The enemy's weapons, now his belongings. Hallelujah. He, he planted the wealth of the enemy. When God gives you your enemy in your hand, you will be blessed with their wealth. Hallelujah. You will plunder. You will plunder. The enemy doesn't have authority hold your blessings. You will plunder his kingdom and you will take it back. Hallelujah. Okay. The, the, hallelujah. And the other time, David went through a very tough time. Um, 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 14. 2 chapter 15 verse 14. He feared of his own son Absalom and he ran away from the uh, kingdom. He ran away from his own land. 2 Samuel chapter 15 verse 14. So David said to all his servants mm. who were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee, mm. or we shall not escape from Absalom. Mm. Make haste to depart, lest he, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring disaster upon us, mm. and strike the city with the edge of the sword. He received a bad news. Somebody came and told him, your son trying to take the kingdom. He is supposed to take the kingdom. He is about to take the kingdom. Kingdom is leaving from your hand. Immediately the fear came to David. David said, let us run away from this place. Okay, verse 30. How he, how he ran away. You can mm. Someone can read verse, same chapter, verse 30. So, David went up by the ascent of the Mount of Olives mm. and wept as he went up. And he, he, had, he had his head covered and went barefoot. See the situation of David. Few minutes before, he was a king. He was ruling. Now, he was with a barefoot. Right? And also, he covered his face. He was crying. Bible says he wept and he climbed the Mount of Olives. See, he went through the shameful events. His face, he couldn't open his face. There was no shoes on his foot. The barefoot. He was crying and he was climbing up the mountain. How much it's difficult. Few minutes before he was a king. Right? When you lose something in your life, you will feel that I am going through the shameful things. Have you ever experienced when you when your 
going through the failure, when you are going through the disappointment, you will feel that the Lord put me into shame. Why I am going through this shame? Why I need to go through all this shame? Okay, this is not ended here. You can read verse uh, 2 Samuel chapter 16, verses 5 to 8. 2 Samuel chapter 16, verses 5 to 8. Five to eight. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, now, when the king David came to Bahurim, mm. there was a man from the family of the house of Saul, mm. whose name was Shimei, the son of Gera, mm. coming from there. He came out cursing continuously okay. as One he came. One question: Shimei was the enemy or the own people? Own nation, own nation people, right? He came from a Saul family. He is also Israelite, right? Uh, maybe the different tribe, but he is also the his own people. He started to curse David. Okay. And um, cursing continuously as, as he, came, he came. And, and he, he threw thrown stones at David. David and all the servants of King hmm. David hmm. and all the people and all the mighty men were on his hmm. right hand hmm. and on his left. Also, Shimei said thus when he cursed. Come out, come out, you bloodthirsty man, you rogue. See, already his face was completely covered. Already he was weeping. He lost the kingdom. Even he lost the shoes. No proper things for him. In midst of everything, the words of curse from his own people. How much shameful things he went through. Right? And also he's throwing stones. He's cursing. You are a bloodthirsty mm. man. But he he was the one saved the people from the Philistines' hand. But he was cursing. You are not at all a blessed man. You are a bloodshedding man. You are rogue. So how much the shameful things David went through it. Okay, you can read continuously. Yes. The Lord has brought upon you all the blood of the house of Saul. See, and also he is mentioning that for your shameful events, who is the reason? The Lord. Mm -hmm. in Always in the enemy will tell you the lie. For your shameful things, he will point out the Lord is the reason for you. But God is not the reason. The enemy is the reason. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God puts you into the shameful events, he will turn into double portion of blessing. Amen. Amen. If God puts you into the shameful events, God will be with you. Yes. Amen. God put Job into the shameful events he needs to go. But Bible says, God was with Job. Amen. Amen. And also David, when David went through it, his, peop his fellow people asked, shall we kill this people? You can read the verse continuously. Hmm. Um. Okay. And the Lord has delivered the kingdom into the hand of Absalom, your mm. son. Mm. So now you are caught in your own evil because you are a bloodthirsty man. See, uh, again, the enemy accusing him. His own people became an enemy, David. He's accusing your own acts. Your own, because of your acts, you are in this position. First, he reasoned out the Lord is the reason. Now, your deeds. You made this mistake. Because of the enemy always accuse you and God. Hallelujah. Do you agree with me? Yes. Do you feel that it's late already? Okay. The same thing will happen to you also. Whenever you go through the shameful events, the enemy will accuse you and God. Hallelujah. Okay, we can read continuously. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. And... Uh, which word then Abishai, that? the son of Zariah, said to the king, Why should this dead dog curse, curse my lord the king? King, Please let me go See, over. We need to have the right people when you go through the shameful events. Amen? Right? They need to tell you, you are the king, he is the dead dog. Who is the dead dog? The Who is the dead dog? The enemy is the dead dog. Yeah. Amen? When the enemy accuses you, you should have the right people next to you. They need to say who you are. 
Amen. You are the daughter of king of kings. They need to say. They need to say you are the son of king of kings. You need to have the right Zerusai next to you. Amen. If you keep the wrong person with you, they will call you. Maybe. Maybe Shima is the right. Because you shed the blood of Saul, maybe you are going through it. No, 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 no. Do you agree with me? Yes. You need to have the right person next to you. They should build your faith. If they are taking your faith out of you, you need to recognize they are the, not the right people coming close to you, when, especially when you go through the shameful events. Hallelujah. Otherwise, they will also throw the stones upon you. Already Shimei is throwing the stones. Thank God. God gave a good soy for David. David said, he said, even though you are not having a shoes on you, even though you are weeping, even though your face or faces are covered with a cloth, even though you are hearing all these rubbish words, still you are the king for us. Amen? Still you, are, you belong to the living God. Hallelujah. That's the way the Serizoi built the faith of David. Very soon, everything will change. Hallelujah. But what David replied? Hmm. David said to Abishai, and all his mm. servants, see mm. how my son who came from my own body seeks my life. How much more now may this Benjam Benjamite? David said, I am going through more than this. My own son chased me. This is nothing. Shimei is nothing. How he compared the things? <coughs> Shimei is nothing. Then hmm. let him alone. Let him curse. Hmm. For so the Lord has ordered him. Okay. David knew. David knew, Sherishai, I know you are brave. I know you can kill him. But let him curse because if you interfere, you can take the head only. You cannot bring the kingdom back. Right? But if the Lord intervenes in this situation, mm -hmm. he can take off his head also and also he can bring my kingdom back. back. Amen? He did not lean on the human power. He just allowed the Lord. Let him curse. Let him curse. You can read the next verse also. It may be that the Lord will look on my affliction mm. and that the Lord will repay me with good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went along the road, Shimei went along the hillside opposite him mm. and cursed as he went, threw stones at him and, and kicked the, up dust. This is from the previous verse. Uh, 11. It may be that the Lord will look on my Affliction, affliction and that the Lord will repay me with good for his yeah, cursing, cursing this, day. this day. David knew one thing. I have a God. His eyes are watching over me. He is watching over my shameful incidents. Let him see continuously what he is doing to me. At least after he sees that, he will repay me with good things. <coughs> he allowed the shameful things. Let it happen some more. At least let him see this. Right? Amen? If you take off his head, God will think, okay, Sherisha is helping David. Shimei is gone. Right? David allowed those things. Let it happen some for a while. God will change my situation. Things. God will could pay, repay me with good things. Hallelujah. Finally, if you see that verse 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 9 and 15. <coughs> 2 Samuel chapter, I am going to finish it. 2 Samuel chapter 19, verse 9 and 15. Hmm. Now all the people were in a dispute throughout hmm. all the tribes of Israel, saying, the king saved us from the hand of our enemies. Hmm. He delivered us from the hand of the Philistines. Now he has fled from the land because of Absalom. See, these people, people of opportunities, mm -hmm. Right? It's very late. After Absalom died, now they are telling, this king only saved us from the hands of Philistines. Sometimes God will use the opportunities for us also. Amen? They will tell something for our blessings. Then they said, okay, verse, uh, next verse, sister, verse 15. 15. Hmm. Then the king returned and came to the jo Jordan. And Judah came to... Okay, now King David is coming back to... Jordan. 
coming back to his kingdom. Okay. The people decided to call him, let him, let him come back, let him rule over us. Okay, verse, verse 16 and 17 is very important. And she made 16, 17, 18. Mm. And she made the son of God, the, sorry, the son of mm. Jira, mm. a Benjamite, who was from Bahurim, mm. hurried and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. Who came back? Uh, Shimei. The same Shimei. Okay. Now, there, uh. there were a thousand men of Benjamin with him. Mm. The, the Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, he is, he is gathering people to uh, meet King David. King. Mm. And his 15 sons mm. and his 20 servants with him. Mm. And they went over the Jordan before the king. Mm. Next verse. Mm. Then a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household mm. and to do what he thought good. Mm. Uh, David's mercy to Simei. Right. Now Simei, the son of... Now the Simei, the son of uh, Jira, fell down before the king when he had crossed the Jordan. Okay, the same Simei, now he came with people. What he did? He fell down. Fell down before what he did? Then uh, a ferry boat went across to carry over the king's household. He is making a trip for the David's household. He is driving the boat. He is helping his David's family to go to the other shores. He came and asked, King, shall I do this? Shall I take you to the other show? Shall I take your daughter? Shall I carry your son? Three. See, the same person who threw the stones upon him, now he's working for King David. Hallelujah. God changed these shameful things into joy. Hallelujah. Amen. God can do it to you also. Hallelujah. Because his eyes are watching over you. Whatever the shameful events you went through, God will repay it with good works. Amen. God will repay it with good things. God changed the shameful things in David's life. God brought the kingdom back to him. Hallelujah. Maybe you went through a lot of shameful things in your life. But this morning, God wants to repay it to you with good things. If you believe, you will receive it. Amen. Shall we all stand up and 